welcome back to the Screen Chronicles. I'm Steve, with me as always, Colby, and we've got a big special guest here. Uh, you might know him, we've had him on before, Yepa Beck Larson, played Heston hey. on The Last Kingdom. Thank you for being on again. Thank you for having me back. How you doing? I'm doing good. I mean, uh, same situation as last time, you know, <laughs> locked down, not a lot of jobs, really? you know, hanging with my boy, my Han Solo. Yeah, how is Han Solo? Real parents today for the first time since he uh, moved out. So that was Ooh. really uh, that Ooh. was that was a really good uh, good moment. His mom rejected him, but his dad loved him. <laughs> his mom was like, "Get away from me!" But his dad was, "Hey, boy." <laughs> <laughs> That's good. It's usually the other way around with people. Yeah, absolutely. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you think with absolutely. dogs too, but interesting. So it's still locked down pretty tight there. It's opening up gradually. Yeah. I mean, uh, you know, uh, top division sports are back up, at least football or soccer, as you say, and um, nice. schools are open, you know, but it's kind of, I think that's, you know, the problem around the world, basically, when it has been locked down so tight and they start to gradually open up, people just forget that there's still a pandemic going on. Yeah. You still have to be careful, you know? Yeah. So in Norway, we don't have to, you know, uh, the max amount of people that can be together in one place is uh, 200. Okay. Right now. But okay. uh, you still have to keep your social social distancing and everything. And, but you know, people, this the weather, in Norway, it's so cold, you know, in the winter. So when spring comes and summer comes, everybody just, you know. Yeah. So the exactly. park life and stuff. Yeah, uh, and uh, of course there was this whole thing that happened over in the U.S. that everybody uh, stood behind and uh, demonstrations and stuff like that. We had that here as well. It's Which awesome. Is good. People are yeah, it's yeah, awesome. It people is. are getting together. It is really it. good, but it's, it's still a bit dangerous. You it's know? really it's, unfortunate it's, the timing <laughs> of this. Like it's you know the big thing is not getting a lot of people together, and then yeah. I mean, unfortunately, you can't really make a demonstration without getting a yeah. lot of people together. No, so you can't. You and can't. you can't say, oh, we'll do this two months later, later this year, you know. No, but because it's... then it will be too late. I mean, you, right. you should continue to do it because it's a really important matter. And, uh, you know, we're all equal. So, Absolutely. So since last time we talked, season four came out. Now we yes, talked to you, I don't remember how many weeks it was before it came out, but we were kind of getting a little bit of hints from you here and there. Not too much, but um, so... What do you think of season four? I love it. I yeah. mean, I love every season. Of course, I'm, you know, biased. Yeah. <laughs> but but I love it. I love it. I um. What do you th- what, what did you guys think about it? We, we like. Yeah, we, we loved, loved it. it. Yeah. Um. Yeah. I don't think it was our favorite season out of the four. No. But, but we loved it. You and know. The thing is, the show cool. set the bar so high too. Is the thing. You know. So. I know, I mean, I know. And yeah. I, I really like the, the setup, though, of where this is going, though. I really yes. like that is what I'm really pumped for. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, it felt like the second half of season four was, was kind of transition, transitioning for season mm-hmm. five a little bit. Mm-hmm. What's yeah. going to happen? So um, I'm very excited for the next season. How, I mean, Hopefully. How can, you, how can you not, though? I'd say you like know? the first. I know. How can we not? It, the only thing that I think, the only thing that could, you know, stop this is, is the whole pandemic thing yeah we'll see we'll see yeah totally We're all pumped guess, we all want to do it of course yeah one week later tlk has been picked up for another season so what yes we're good to go for season five <laughs> what, 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 what guys what would you guys want to see in the in a season five if there is mm. one i just want to see cool growth with ethelston development uh with him and utrid like learning lessons going on adventures kind of uh, him in like maybe his teen years or something i think that'd be cool mm-hmm. yeah absolutely i definitely want to uh see more of that formation of england sort of uh thing going on uh that's that's what i really love i also just want to see some more crazy danes come in yeah, and I do want like a new some stuff up <laughs> mm-hmm. so if there's a season five what do you want heston to do give me okay. a Give me something I can take to the producers if there is one. What do you think, Steve? I die. <laughs> <laughs> Definitely not die. Not not die, but if he does die, I do want an epic level death. Yeah. 
And I definitely yeah. want them to bring back the, uh, you know, holding onto a weapon to make sure you get the Valhalla thing because we didn't really see that this season. So I, I'd love to see that. I would like to maybe see him maybe even try to settle down. But uh, maybe he can't because you know of his warrior ways. Because he can't keep his mouth shut. Yeah, and they, they could. I mean, like honestly, like not trying to, I guess, get pretentious with it or anything. But they could make it a really good like arc for him. Like how I wasn't expecting the the Siegfried and Eric arc, of the second half of two. They could really do it like a tragic arc. Like oh, he's settling down. We don't really hear from him much in the first half of the season. Second half, he starts, you know, doing something. Maybe he starts. You know, coming back at Uhtred, revenge comes up. He loses his wife or something like that. And then maybe like a tragic death. But it'd be a good one, though, if they build it up like that. Good. It all sounds good to me. I think it'd be kind of cool sometime if he appeared. Maybe there's some scenario where it benefits him to help Uhtred. Mm -hmm, that would be and maybe very they have interesting. A, like a kind of a reconciling of their relationship mm -hmm. in a way. You know, not that Heston would go out of his way to help Uhtred. So maybe there's some incentive for him to help Uhtred at some point. And maybe he comes out of nowhere, like we haven't seen him in the season. And like, oh, it's Heston. You know, it would be kind of a cool, like, return, mm -hmm. you know. Mm -hmm. That would be pretty cool. Good ideas. Thanks. Good Thanks. ideas. So if that happens, make sure you credit us. Um, <laughs> oh, yeah. With... <laughs> for sure. I'll name Episode... drop you on screen. Episode four, written by <laughs> Steve Kuzic and Colby Griffin. <laughs> That'd be great. <laughs> Love to call it something the the Papyrus Chronicles. Yes. <laughs> the, papy the Papyrus. <laughs> oh, hey guys. Uh, Yepa just asked us what we would like to see from Heston in season five of The Last Kingdom. And when we were talking to him after we recorded this episode, he also wants to know what you guys think. So please comment what you want to see from Heston in season five of The Last Kingdom. We're going to read them. We know Yep is going to read them. So please give us your thoughts. And uh, without further ado, let's get back. Let's get back to the talk. End of flashback. I mean, I love the thing with Ethelstan and, and Uhtred. Uh, that little kid is awesome, by the way. I love it. <laughs> he's, awesome. such a, uh, he's such a good kid. He's a real, uh, he's a good kid. Bit of a, brat, but a really good kid. Yeah, we just had Ruby Hartley on, and we asked her, like, because she worked with him a lot, like, is he that mature in real life? Like, it's like, holy moly, I would have been playing with the swords and axes and stuff as a kid. Like, you didn't, wouldn't have been able to keep me still. Yeah, and I love that little drive in the first time we see him mm -hmm. sitting on the yes. staircase there. And yes. they just drop. Oh, Please. I got goosebumps again. I know. But you can see Ethelstan, you know, the first king of all England, first king of all the Saxons. I mean... That was a huge spoiler. <laughs> yeah, but it, but it also, I mean, it is Enough. a spoiler, awesome. but, 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 you know, it, I think it, it draws people in because now we want to see what's going on with Ethelstan. Yeah. Yes. It's just How cool does he do it? What is Uhtred's place in this? And, you know, and everybody's place in it. It's really yeah. cool to like watch him from that kid from that point on when you know he's going to be the first king and then you're watching him closely mm -hmm. and he's already acting kingly. Like, oh, yeah. Automatically. Oh, yeah. I love it. It's so cool. And if no, you just look it. back in history, you're going to get spoiled anyways. Yeah. Right? Oh, yeah. Hey, man. <laughs> yeah, I'm just, just joking. But... Rip up a history book and you know what's going to happen. So, <laughs> yeah. oh, it's awesome. But you had yeah. some, some pretty fun scenes as well. And you worked yeah, with a lot of the new cast, too. What was it like working with, I think you had scenes with Jamie Blackley, with um, Stephanie yeah, Martini. Everyone. Yeah, everyone pretty much from the new cast. Sick Trigger. Yeah, yeah. yeah, totally. So that's, that's really cool for Heston because he just, you know, as we talked about, he just travels the land trolling people and uh now he gets to troll a lot of new people and that's cool <laughs> you did talk a lot of smack this season <laughs> he, did. he did. Of can't the keep his mouth shut what the heston what are you doing yeah i, I love it though i mean one of our yeah. we, we talk about one of our favorite uh scenes with heston is you know when he gets to see utrid again in the forest after everything <laughs> went down with bianca and everything Uhtred's not in a good headspace, but then <laughs> Heston seems like he's kind of buddy, buddy with him because he, oh, yeah. he's, he's been kind of friend, kind of an enemy. He's yeah, a friend I mean, me. they're friendly nemesis, you know. Yeah. <laughs> if you can, I mean, I don't think, uh, I think Heston relies on Uhtred to build his own reputation, to be honest. I mean. But he, yeah. he's like, oh, why don't you uh, eat, eat uh, lunch with us or whatever? Yeah, come have a drink, bro. And he's like, okay. How's Ethelflaed? <laughs> 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 to bed. 
I'm like, God, <laughs> shut up, man. <laughs> I love it. I loved it. We did that scene on, on uh, National Day, Norwegian, uh, the 17th of May. So I was supposed to be in uh, Norway and, you know, parading and eating ice cream. But I took some Norwegian chocolate and a uh, flag on set and uh, just celebrated there. And then Alex kicked me off a stump for 20 <laughs> times before we started times. fighting. That's what I meant, because you remember I said it was a rough day? Yeah. We thought you meant for the character. <laughs> no, no, for me, bro. <laughs> In my head, I'm like 23, but my body is so 47. Oh. <laughs> so when we start up, we did the dialogue first, but then we started kind of get into the fight, and then, uh, yeah, I must have been kicked off that. 10, 15, 20 times. And then we started the fight. I was pretty banged up. And then we continued the day after. So, so what makes it a good stump kickoff where you're like, yeah. right, that's the take we're going to use, you know, to where they're like, let's do it 10 times. <laughs> no, it's just different angles uh -huh. and, you know, you know, intent, you know, I want to ask kick me off this man kick it out kick me I'll, I'll jump and you can see you can actually see me fly at least you know six feet or something yeah because i really get into it and i wanted alex to look good of course so right. it's a it's a kind of team um team effort there but um yeah so what's that like is it so you jump back is it all timing or does he actually make some pretty hard contact oh he makes contact yeah. and i just give him a uh, i just go with that energy yeah i see a lot of you guys the there's some other stunt performers and you actors you have like padding on sometimes so i guess you can make contact with each other i have natural padding on <laughs> i just eat a lot of protein before and then we <laughs> <laughs> a little bloated first and then get a spare ribs and some bacon and then i'm good let's go <laughs> oh yeah <laughs> yeah we have we got we have padding um but i don't remember i think i had some knee or oh, elbow pads on i think nothing more gotcha okay okay wow, yeah. Was so he, you, that's how i roll bro <laughs> <laughs> told so you i do my own stunts yeah 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 these are pretty like intense stunts. it looks like you like broke your arm at that one point yeah later <laughs> it just it didn't break no yeah but it just Uchid can't break me no way you can't break heston ah. <laughs> so that's that's we'll one see. of my, our other favorite things is it seems like the fights come to an end uh you know he seems yeah. like he roughed you up and like then you, you might have learned your lesson from talking smack about ethel flag <laughs> yeah no and then you just got more <laughs> More. Uh, he loves to taunt people what can i say i mean some people i i know a couple of i or i've known a couple of guys that are the same they can't shut up yeah. you know whatever that's There's, just hilarious you should have stopped talking like two minutes ago and you're still you know slinging these one-liners that <laughs> You have that you like look on your face when you're getting up and you say that about her and you're just like, ah, come on, dude. I shouldn't have said that. Yeah, but still, I mean, <laughs> as I say, she's too well used to fight over. Come on, dude. <laughs> relax, bro. Let's just yeah. drink some more. And we were having a nice dinner. What is this? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I love doing that scene. I loved it. Super, super Fantastic Heston should thing. be on some sort of dissing rap battle show, I think, after that. <laughs> yeah, totally. he should. Like a Yo Mama. <laughs> a Yo Mama. Has a lot of Yo Mama jokes. Wild and Out. Was it that what it's called? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, where they wear like a, gr a group wears black and a group wears red, and then you just come out in your Heston armor. That'd be <laughs> fantastic. <laughs> yeah. Yo Mama, so fat. When she goes to the movies, she sits next to everybody. <laughs> <laughs> Perfect. Yeah. God, was that you said it was like really hot when you guys were filming? And yeah, I kinda... that day. That day, luckily wasn't, or those two days, luckily wasn't that hot because it had been raining for a couple of days. Yeah. So it was wet, <laughs> but uh, and a bit humid, but not that hot, which is uh... probably helped it make a little bit more look green. That that those forest shots are beautiful. <sighs> you guys are in. Crazy. Holy moly! I mean, the DOPs this season. I mean. Every DOP we've had is just amazing. Yeah. The Last Kingdom has always been pretty good at showing like the gritty shots, um, mm -hmm. you know, making you feel like it's this dirty, dingy world. Mm -hmm. uh, but I'd say this season also had a lot of just like beautiful shots, especially like yeah. the first couple episodes. Mm -hmm. 
uh just like the the sunlight and everything it was just beautiful i was like everyone seems happy so far <laughs> yeah i mean that, that, that's what that, well, that's what we get for shooting you know winter versus summer you know because yeah. in winter it's so much easier to make things look gritty yeah. because it's mud and snow and you know but hungary is beautiful in, in the summertime so it's really hard to that probably played well for the season three vibe how dark season three was too mm -hmm. a lot probably helped that it was in the winter too it's cool to oh, think yeah, about. absolutely yeah it's going about so we talked to molly Rowe and we talked a little bit about your costume Mm -hmm. And she said that you came in and you had some ideas about like the runes you wanted that are kind of engraved into the petals of your armor. Could you talk about some of those runes that you chose? Yeah, I chose three runes. I chose uh, wealth, which is okay. uh, pretty obvious. Yeah. <laughs> and I chose horse, the horse rune, because I think, uh, did we speak about that? Uh, Heston means the horse, right? I think, oh, okay. yeah, we did. Yeah. In Scandinavian languages. And that's also uh, like a wealth rune or... Yeah, uh, and then I chose ulcer or disease because oh. <laughs> I'm the ulcer of Wessex. <laughs> That's what, <laughs> yeah, and also I put a D on it for Dagfin for Dagfin because oh, yeah, he's yeah. not there anymore. And if you yeah. watch closely, I have two daggers on me this season. One of them is Dagfin's. Oh, that's cool. Yeah, yeah we missed him. We missed Dagfin a little yeah, bit. I missed him. Season. I missed him a lot. Yeah, you're one of the only uh, Danes that's been, you know, making it in and out of seasons consistently without, uh, you know, getting your heels sliced, your head chopped off, you know. <laughs> yeah. Because I'm so fast <laughs> over short distances. And he's smart, too. And smart, yeah, yeah. I think we talked about how, like, back in season two, you decided it's not smart to battle with uh, Bjorn, with Siegfried, going yeah. into the battle, you know, and, and that, like, he's, like you said last interview, you got common sense. Heston's got common sense. Yeah, I, I yeah I don't see him as a coward. I see him as a you know a guy just wants to live. He has more fun living than he thinks he's gonna have being dead. He Even though he goes to Valhalla, because he believes in that. But still, no, that's what I thought. Like, especially when you're trying to escape Winchester um, at the <laughs> end of season four, I was just like, Heston just loves life. He does not yeah. want to die. He doesn't want any chance yeah. that he's gonna die. <laughs> And this season also, uh, he says that he's tired of war and he just wants a piece of land and stuff. And, I, and that's the truth. I think he yeah. feels that he's too old to be, you know, in the front lines or he just want peace with occasional taunting of nobility. <laughs> yeah, I guess that's the way I looked at it, too. It's like he doesn't want to fight, but if an opportunity comes his way, he might take it. You know, something pops oh, yeah. up. You know? Yeah, yeah. I mean, if I can, if I can win something, if I can get some gold or silver or women or whatever, then you know, he's still an opportunist. Yeah. You know, because I think when you went to am when you actually ambushed Uhtred, I think you say that you were looking for the king mm -hmm. on the road, right? So that was the mm -hmm. original plan. You just had mm -hmm. that opportunity. But that was for Sigtrygir, right? So because I'm kind oh, of right. his lieutenant, you know, so that was his order. But then Uhtred came along. And uh, ooh, look at that tree! <laughs> <laughs> yeah, tell us a little bit about that scene. That was There's been a bit of controversy about that scene. I've seen it on forums and stuff. People don't get it, and uh, people are also uh, kind of wondering why we're why did we go into like a Bond villain moment? <laughs> yeah, you know, it did feel like it's a James Bond our, villain our moment. Podcast, it yeah. is kind of a Bond villain it's, moment. It's not a bad still, thing, though. I'm not complaining about it. But still, as I said earlier, I think. Heston thinks he needs Uchid. I mean, there's been so much fun, you know? Every altercation gives Heston something. If it's a woman or a, some reputation or, you know, just uh, feeling superior by escaping or whatever, you know? So uh, I think he, he really enjoys uh, Uchid, having Uchid yeah. around. But still, he wanted it. He, if he had died... It would be perfect, but still, I think he's kind of happy that it didn't die because then this can continue. Yeah. Well, that's, yeah, that's cool. Yeah, you know, and to be fair, who gets down from a tree when they're bound, you know, hanging upside down? Nobody can do that, not even Uhtred. So he thought it was pretty safe. And he safe. told the guy, like, you know, if it takes too long, just slit their throat, you know? Yeah. And when yeah. Uhtred shows up, it's like a month later or something because he hasn't. Any... 30 days, right. Yeah, so he, he, he thinks he's dead. So when he sees him on the ramparts, he's like, and he hasn't gotten any message from his men that they, you know, he got away or anything. So he thinks everything's cool. 
Because Edith then killed he's him. right there. What? <laughs> so, yeah. <laughs> Their relationship, though, has always been interesting because, like you said, that we, we've talked about the frenemies, but the first time they meet, you know, Uhtred, you know, lends him a helping hand. He he helps Saves him out. Saves his from, life. Yeah. From being the the toy in uh, in Efferwich, yeah, yeah, yeah. Efferwich, that's it. Yeah, 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 uh, yeah, absolutely. And I think that also is in his back of, in the back of his mind because he might seem honorless, but he has some honor. I mean, I think so. He recognizes. I mean, in um, is it episode five or six? The the whole uh, the Bjorn, the rising of the dead, the yeah, prophecy. Yeah. He says that you spared my life at Efferwich. You're yeah expected and welcome so he knows he knows that he wouldn't have been alive with if it wasn't for Richard and maybe that's in his back of his head yeah. that he didn't just kill him outright you know give him a fighting chance at least you know yeah yeah true true and when he guys... when he hangs him upside down true that's, yeah that's what I thought but now it, to me if there's a season good. five we're even yeah <laughs> now no holds barred <laughs> let's go <laughs> if there's one I hope Hopefully there's... there will be, you know, but um, I'm very curious too. One thing I thought was very interesting is when you, you notice um, Edith during that public execution and you, you know, you Heston smart. He kind of picks up on this is more than a whore and you go confront her. Looks like you're protecting her oh, yeah. in a lot of ways, which is like, we kind of like, Oh, that's, that's different kind of a characteristic. If you, if you take, if you take, this is like, what is it? eight to 10 years after season three or something. Mm -hmm. And people grow, people change. Totally. As I talked about earlier, I think, I really think he wants to settle down. Yeah. And I just think he's trying a new approach yeah. to a woman. You know, he's not outright raping her, <laughs> you know, as he says to Skade in, in season three, whether given or taken, I get what I want. Right. Right. So he's trying okay. a new approach because <laughs> I love this line. Women have grown to appreciate my charms yeah. given a year or so. <laughs> yeah. Oh man, that was so much fun. <laughs> but I think he, he just, he doesn't want to, you know, <laughs> come on, uh -huh. I've been nice to you. Yeah. You know, I'm a nice guy. I'll give you silver and uh, keep you fed and yeah. You'll give me babies. And you like say to her when she's like trying to stay in this place that's about to have a battle, you're like, you're going to die. Yeah. You know, she's it's an not... ungrateful bitch. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> we love that line. <laughs> yeah, but <laughs> that's great. given the time, you know, see, he might be right. <laughs> Yeah, because he could have killed her. He could have given her to Sigtrigid. He could have, you know, could have done. He could have toured the land with her, down, bound to a cart, whatever, you know. Mm, but he didn't. Yeah. He feeds her, and he, you know, he keeps her warm and dry. And yeah, he's being really nice to her. He's trying. Yeah, he's, <laughs> he's trying, trying really hard. <laughs> <laughs> but then, oh fuck off, then <laughs> go back to the old ways. <laughs> I don't know. So it almost felt like a Eric Cartman moment for me. Like, oh yeah, 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 yeah. Screw you, bitch! I'm going home. <laughs> yeah, I love. Yeah, I love Eric Cartman. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. He's it's my hero. Yeah. My uh, my uh, actually, I have two mottos, and one of them is actually from Eric Cartman in a Halloween special. I think Kenny has died, of course. Right. Uh, but Kenny had all the candy, and he's in the morgue. So the, you know, Kyle and Stan, they'd keep put, you have to go in there and get the candy. And Eric is so, Cartman is so scared, but he walks like a bridge with a moat or something. And he says, focus on the candy, focus on the candy. And uh, yeah, that's a good motto, focus on the candy. <laughs> so I took that to heart. I love it. Awesome. <laughs> a great life motto. Yeah, um, it is. I mean, you know, not candy per se, but you know, everything good in life. You know, focus on positivity. Hey, preach that. That's awesome. But that, I think it really resonates with Heston's change in personality too. When Brita, who just wants blood and sex and blood, comes and you you're spying, and then you have another great line. One of my favorite I lines for you this season. I spy on everyone. You know, it's okay. Hey, hey, man. <laughs> I'm honest. You know, he's honest, and everybody knows. Yeah. And that, but that's and as um, oh my God, so many Ethel Ethelred Ethelred says that as well. Who did you talk to? 
Yes, Heston? Are you, are you an idiot? Everybody knows that he's a liar. No, nobody can trust him. But still, he just, and he's honest about it. Yeah. If you yeah. trust me, if you trust him, it's on you. <laughs> that was funny too when he said that. With um, but when Brita's like, you you're like they want a truce. This is good. Mm-hmm. And Brita's like, that's not good. That's not going to get me my Saxon blood. But uh, you're just like, like this is going to give us more land, more silver. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Land mm-hmm. and silver. That's what it's all about. Love it. <laughs> we always used to joke about that. Um, from like seasons one and two, silver land like steve and i because that was the most important thing to <laughs> the danes land, land and then I red-headed think, women and red-headed women yeah. <laughs> i think sick trigger says in his speech they want something else other than silver and land he like says like peace and land yeah, yeah, yeah peace yeah. and land yeah, yeah and we were just like not silver mm. what? no that's the old that's the old the old guard yeah. speech right yeah where he says that they they all failed we have to try something new blah 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 which was an awesome speech it was a really good speech. And the thing is that Heston is of the old, he's been there all the time. So he's kind of, what? You're talking about me, bro. So yeah, I, can, I, 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 think I, I think they though. put in like a spit there, right? Yes. I spit to the ground, yeah. Yeah, and then they pan to Brita and she looks pissed too because mm-hmm. you're both part of that old mm-hmm. thing. I mean, he's not wrong though. I mean, <laughs> no, he's not, he's right. <laughs> nothing is, yeah, nothing good has come out of it, so. What did you what did you think of Sick Trigger? I mean, obviously you were there filming with him, but then to see love him on him. screen. Yeah. I love that. I told him as well, I love that whole contemplating berserker vibe he gives off. You know, he's like yeah. a fierce, fierce dude, but he thinks. You know? Yeah. He's smart. I say that to I, I think I say that to uh to Utrecht in the woods as well. Yes, yes, yeah. He's young, but he's he, cunning. Cunning, yeah. 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 I, I loved it. He he brings a lot to the show and, and uh also he brings I think uh something you haven't seen in a Dane before on this totally. show. He's like a so, Dane millennial. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, let me just text that to him right now. <laughs> hey Dane millennial man. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's great. What do you uh, think about Heston? Where do you think he's going to go then? I have no clue. What do you want from him? Do you want him to live, die? <laughs> I want him to live, of course. I think he's he's just going to try to – he's an opportunist. So he's – I mean, you can see him, you know, he, he leave when he leaves, he's got like a satchel of silver and, you know, silverware and stuff that he can, you know, sell or pawn or whatever you did back then. <laughs> but uh, So he has money. He has a little bit of money to keep himself sustained, you know, alive yeah. and maybe hire some men or something. Um, yeah. I, I know what happens in the books, but uh, I don't know if we're going to do that. Hey, I want him to become the king of England. Hey, yeah, God. he should. <laughs> he should, <laughs> you know. He at least needs to go to Paris and do that thing uh, and oh, fake his death. <laughs> I want to do that so bad, but that's done already. <laughs> it's already done. But they didn't do it twice. Exactly. So you could have one in the first half of the season. You could have another one in the second half of the season. Yeah. Season yeah. five. Exactly. <laughs> that would be awesome. So what did you think of, you weren't in the battle, but that episode four battle. Good battle. Did you like it? I like it. I really yeah. like it. I mean, uh, I really love the moment between Aldhelm and uh, Ethelflaed in there. Um, that's a good moment. That's a really good moment. I also like the fact that because everything has happened, Knut thinks that his son is dead and, you know, stuff like that. Mm-hmm. He rushes into this. I, I love it. it. It's a lot of passion in that, uh, in that battle. Yeah, and that one-on-one fight, too, with, with Uhtred and, and Knut. There's a lot of passion there. Oh, yeah, man. and the whole, so oh, man, the whole Brita thing when she gets learns that uh it was knut i liked the moment like you said with um ethel flood and aldhome one of my favorite moments from the battle is when edward shoots the jackdaw yeah yeah, yeah. in the back yeah yeah, i literally got up off my couch and was like yeah yeah go wessex (laughs) yeah a lot of good moments a lot of good moments do you wish you would have been in that one i wish i was in ever battle I mean, I just, I just love to be on this show, and I want to, uh, uh, yeah, hang around with my friends and wielding swords and eating meat. <laughs> yeah, 
I love it. I wish I, yeah, I wish I could have been there. But um, still, if I, I think if they put me in that, he would have died. That's what I, I was almost so. wondering is if they did it to save him, to make sure that he didn't, you know, die. Yeah, maybe. And if that's the case, then thank you guys. Thank yeah. you, uh, <laughs> Nigel and Gareth and Ricky. Must have oh, done yeah. something right. <laughs> Because we have stay out, we lose stay up in that battle. Oh yeah, he just what a crazy death. It's yeah, watermelon, anything like that. A, and um, Erdwolf's death is also oh yeah, but it looks Bad. like a very Bad. professional edu- uh, uh, execution. Yeah, <laughs> that's textbook. Yeah, down through the <laughs> slice both the left lung and the heart, and it takes him like thirty seconds to die, just lying there gasping. He's like, Ugh. "Yeah, it's actually the most merciful way to do it." Probably, uh, <laughs> or chop his head off. Maybe it would be more merciful. But maybe. Uh, I don't you, know. You say to him right before that, you're like, "Don't worry, he's gonna spare you. He's he's merciful." Because <laughs> yeah. I'm an asshole. Yeah. <laughs> and you like look at the other guard and you like laugh. You're like. <laughs> yeah, give him some give him some final hope give him some hope in this final moments just to tear him down <laughs> oh my god spiritually and physically yeah <laughs> i love it i love playing heston he's uh he's nice. really cool <laughs> he is really cool but yeah oh, he got man. like a, another dynamic this year like um like you were saying with uh, how he's grown it's kind of cool to see him actually caring about stuff you know, a little mm-hmm. bit like um, about peace and stuff. It was really cool to see. Yeah, yeah, I love that. Yeah. Uh, I mean, uh, shows like this can have a tendency to just show bad guys as bad guys. It's all a matter of perspective, right? Who right. writes history? You know, people love their families, but they had to go out and pillage. <laughs> it's weird now because we're like a thousand years later. Yeah, but, but back then it made total then, sense, you know. Yeah, that was just like, oh, we wanted that <laughs> stuff over there. It's their crops grow better there, but there's perfect. Already- Let's go there. <laughs> I just finished watching a Norwegian show called Norseman. Norseman? Yeah, 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 Norseman. Yeah, the comedy. Yeah, which did you like it? Funny. I did. Li- it, I I liked it. It was different humor. Yeah, yeah, um, yeah. It was very different humor, but it was pretty funny uh, overall. Yeah, it's like a contemporary dialogue set in, or contemporary story set in, uh, in that, uh, yeah, in that era. I love it. I really, really, really like it. I like it. But that's what it reminded me of is they were just kind of like, yeah, we got to go out on a raid today. You know, we're back yep. later. Yep. <laughs> See you later. <laughs> yeah, I know almost everyone on that show. Oh, really? Uh, yeah, yeah. They're good colleagues of mine. And uh, yeah, I really want to be on it as well. Yeah, you should be. You'd be good on that show. With yeah, that, with yeah, the humor yeah. for sure. Yeah, it would be it would be uh, would be really fun. We'll see. Would it just be a, would it be like a crossover? Would it be Heston on the show, <laughs> or would you be a different character? I don't know. I w- I would love to do something completely different than Heston. To be honest, just like a s- s- really dumb Viking or something. Yeah, <laughs> <It'd be fun. laughs> or shy, super shy, or who's the, the very polite or something if you kill someone or saying sorry to someone while he's raping them or whatever it's kind of like the main guy there what's his name <laughs> yeah yeah he's yeah, like yeah, so absolutely. nice he's super nice <laughs> yeah. I lo- there are so many like, good lines in that show i remember i think that's season one or two i don't remember but he's sitting there by a lake contemplating thinking about big things yeah she comes over like oh big things like life and no no think about big like mountains and whales (laughs) (laughs) i love it it's so good and uh, how the earl in the beginning i think that's the first episode how he's he's not comfortable with you know fear-based management yeah is this the tall guy yeah 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 yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. (laughs) i don't think that's some i don't think it's for me man i don't like it (laughs) it's like i love it do you remember (laughs) <laughs> this is a fun fact, though. One episode, Orm is sitting there with his, you know, claws. Oh, yeah. He doesn't have hands anymore, right? Yeah. Is that Orm? I think, I think is that Orm or? Orm or? No, no, that's, no, uh, um, no, 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 that's. Um, who is it? I know who you're talking about. Yeah, the other Earl. Oh, the, oh, the, 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 the other Earl, the bald guy. Yeah, 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 yeah. I don't remember He's sitting name. there in a bathtub, right? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and this old <laughs> female slave is washing him and maybe, you know 
giving him a hand job or something? <laughs> Probably. That's my mom. <laughs> Both of you guys went. Hmm? Wait, wait, wait! You mean <laughs> the actress? <laughs> what are the you? actress is my mom. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what the slave? <laughs> No, no, no. The actress is my mom. I kind of pimped, pimped her out. You did? I did, because I saw, I, I, know, I know the caster, and the caster went out and said, we want to, um, we need an old lady or an elderly lady that's fearless. I was like, I wrote her, and I was like, what do you mean fearless? And, oh, well, this is one scene where she's going to get smacked down by a huge Viking. Like, yeah, she can do that. And there's this <laughs> other scene. Yeah. Well, she kind of, yeah, has to masturbate the Earl. <laughs> hey, here's my mom's number. <laughs> <laughs> and I called my mom and I called my mom and said, I think I got you a job. <laughs> she, she was like, oh, really? What? No, in the, in the Norseman. No, for real? Yeah. What is it? You'll know. <laughs> You'll find out. She took like she took like, she took like a week or two to make up her mind, but she did it, and uh, so proud of her for doing that. Cool. She went so out of her comfort zone to do this. Yeah. Has she ever acted before or anything? She started acting when she was oh. about sixty-five or something, because she she retired, and and everybody said, "Man, well, now you can do everything that's on your bucket list." And yeah, but she was like, "But I've already done everything on my bucket list," mm -hmm. so she made kind of a new list going out of my comfort zone list and acting was Whoa. one of them acting was one of them so she started as an extra but she's so good so she's done a lot of shorts uh short films and been in a lot of commercials and stuff since then and yeah i'm Did just you? happy she's not like a 45 year old male because <laughs> she would have taken all my jobs for me <laughs> And we actually did, we actually did a short together before Christmas, which was really cool. Oh, cool. Yeah. What's that what called? Was it? English. Oh, that Day, I think the t English title is. Okay. Uh, it's about a woman that, it's her birthday, an elderly woman, it's her birthday, and people, uh, her kids uh, can't show up all of a sudden, and, and her grandkids and, and stuff. So she has, she has to celebrate her birthday by herself she goes to this bar and i play the bartender and they start to dialogue and, and you know talk about life cool and it's uh it's uh, really interesting kind of discusses um the fear when you the more old you grow people start to you know your friends maybe die and and your family has less time for you and stuff like that you know Right. So it kind of discusses stuff like that. Real so life. Really issues, interesting. Yeah. yeah. Very cool. Now, what did your mom do? And she uh, won an award oh. for best actress in uh, a film festival in Romania for that. That's awesome. So proud of her. Your mom sounds like an awesome woman. She that's very, is. That's very cool. She's super, super woman. What did she do before she got into her uh, um, lot of stuff? Oh, okay teacher yeah. oh, she, she worked as a salesman in ibm like 30 years ago she's done everything very cool that is so cool i like mm -hmm. the uh, concept of a going outside of my comfort zone list yeah do you have something like that something outside your comfort zone a list of i mean i'm outside of my comfort zone every day i'm working so it's kind of <laughs> but uh yeah i try it's hard to get it you know step out of your comfort zone but uh, yeah. i think that's what make you makes you grow Absolutely. So I try. That's, that's an awesome story, though. And she was in Norseman, so now I got to go back and rewatch um, that. So, well, maybe not. I, <laughs> no, the whole back. world is going to know it, Mom. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> that is hilarious. But. Uh, speaking yeah. of shows, though, uh, since we've talked, has Mandalorian, has that come out to you guys yet? Actually, uh, they postponed the date. I don't think Disney Plus is coming to Norway until September. What so the heck? Wait. Oh. And they haven't called. Oh. They haven't called me yet, so I don't think they've seen the interview yet. So no. we should just <laughs> link it to the Disney. We'll oh, I'm just, we're just going to have like a ton of comments now with John Favreau. Just <laughs> John, yeah, Favreau. Yeah, John Favreau. Yeah, yeah. John Favreau. Come on, John. But someday we should have a chat about it. 
Yeah, I will. Well, I'll, 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 I'll tell you guys for sure. And uh, I'd love to talk a little Star Wars with you there. Oh, yeah. What you think about it. But, um, yeah, yeah. I mean, I'm, I'm really baffled by the whole thing, the situation in Norway about Last Kingdom as well, because there's only the, it's only the two first seasons that are out on Netflix. They haven't even Norway. got three out yet. No. So uh, I don't know what's going on. I feel like yeah. And it's so weird it. because there are so many Norwegians in it. Yeah, and it's the same thing in the other Scandinavian countries too. I think some of the mm-hmm. people we've talked to, Sweden, they don't have it. And yeah, just like what? <laughs> I think it, I think they're Denmark, punishing yeah. us for actually doing it that thing back then. ten thousand years ago. <laughs> Getting our revenge now. Netflix has a has a grievance with you guys. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, with your ancestors. <laughs> Fuck you. Hey, do you like my cup? Out of time? See, out of time. Do you know what? Can you see what it is? California? You know California? Back to the future, baby. Oh, oh yeah. Okay. That's sweet. Coffee. My, my coffee is uh, McCafe today. Ooh. Oh, yeah. Now I can get money for that. What? <laughs> 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 Tell me how. <laughs> oh, isn't that, isn't that a, like a brand or something? Mccafe. Oh, because we put it on our thing here. You Colby. just put yeah. it on the thing. You just. Oh yeah, we that was just add. a commercial. That yeah, was you got to have. Yeah, McCafe. My favorite coffee. Oh, <laughs> equate triple A antibiotics. Hey, wait. wait what else do I have? Stuff here? <laughs> <laughs> Yankees. <laughs> Send me stuff. Hey, oh yeah, right. that's awesome. That's Sharpie money now. Yeah, yeah, it is. Yeah. So you got you got soccer starting back up, huh? Yes, finally, both in England and Norway. So uh, and actually, they play on the same. So now I get to see four games a week because they play on uh, Saturday, Sunday, and midweek, weekend and midweek every week okay. now. So we're getting our fill back. That's, That's awesome. so good. So good. Yeah. And we got yeah. a new coach in the Norwegian team, the Volarenga, which I, I support. And uh, he's a good coach. And we've done pretty well. We're on fifth place after four games. Just have We have one loss and two wins and one draw. So Are they letting people go to the games at all, or is it just TV? 200. Just nice. 200 people can go in? Yeah. That's interesting. So at my club, we have this uh, because, which was really cool, we have this supporter um, – what do you call it? Groups, supporting official supporting groups. They had the opportunity to, you know, get like 30 tickets for every game and stuff so that there will at least be some, you know, chanting and stuff, but they yeah. said, no, everybody should get the chance. So now they draw from all the season ticket holders. Uh, so it's just random if you, if you get to go to a game and or not. But uh, one of my friends who's uh, also a season ticket holder. He's in the draw for this Saturday's game. So let's hope he wins and I'll go with him. There you go. Oh, yeah. That would be awesome. That would be awesome. At least we have some sports back and some entertainment. I mean, yeah, it means a lot. I mean, I think everybody is during these past months, a lot of people have understood that uh, what they do when they don't do what they have to do, when what they have to do, yeah, they are trying to get entertained, exactly. you know, from s- movies or shows or books or sports or music or whatever. And I think it it's kind of uh, elaborated how how important it is to human beings, the culture, to, and yeah. yeah, culture. We're lucky to have Netflix though, and we're lucky the Last Kingdom came out when it did. Oh, uh, that was God. a good way to. Um, <laughs> And how about that timing with the disease thing? I was just going to ask you about that episode six. What did so you think of that? Strange. It was so strange. So strange. If I, if I didn't know, I would say it was planned, you know? Yeah. Right. But it now wasn't. Did, well, that's what, like, did when you, I was, because I normally, you know, watch shows to, like, sort of escape from reality, get into that world. And Last Kingdom yeah. has been great with that. But then yeah. when that one started picking up and, like, that guy coughed and, like, Finnan starts freaking out washing his hands, <laughs> I'm like, freaks. I'm just like, like my heart starts just going and i'm like this yeah. is now this yeah. Is yeah, yeah, yeah yeah and like ruby um sneezed Teora sneezed because there was pollen in the air mm-hmm. and finnan was like whoa and like <laughs> that was everybody yeah. i know like, during the first i know month yeah like uh, so I'm, 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 i think it's quite good that they didn't you know uh, um 
follow through more than they did in in yeah. the show because yeah. then it would be too weird. weird. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. It was just hints of it now and then. It was really just that episode, episode six, wasn't yeah. it? Yeah. Like the yeah. only quarantine episode. But it yeah. was, it was and like it's airborne. Filmed. Oh, it's touch. Yeah. Finn and freaks out though. So good. Mark is so good freaking out. Well, that, that was all of us. That was all of us. Uh, yeah, I know, I know, I know. Well, it was like the two ends of the spectrum. Like Finnan was like that, and then you had like like Sictric didn't care as much. He was like, let's yeah. swim through the water the with people. all the dead infected people. <laughs> no. <laughs> no, we go around. No, 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 no. We yeah. will fight and die before that. Yeah. <laughs> and like some of the Christians are like, well, it's only going to take you if you've sinned. That was a funny moment too. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Forget yeah, about that moment. Yeah, and all yeah. the guys like, oh, really? Oh. The soldiers right away. <laughs> <laughs> but I think uh, it's really cool. That whole thing uh, kind of let us get to know the characters more, I think. Because they're not, Finnan is not just a, you know, funny good with the sword he's also terrified of stuff he can't fight you know and stuff mm -hmm. like that you yeah. get to know more uh, made the characters more three-dimensional i think so i think so more human yeah. more relatable yeah absolutely. obviously we could all relate like we just said how do you think heston would have been dealing with with that had he been in like that episode or been around who knows if he even knew what was going on where he was but i think he wouldn't have been i, I don't think he would have believed it i don't think i think he would have uh Interesting question. I don't think he would have seen it as that much. He would just kept to himself. I think. I think I self isolated maybe or. Yeah, I feel like he would have cared because he didn't want to die because he loves life. But. Yeah, but still, you know. Uh, yeah, uh, that's an interesting question. I haven't thought about that. Can't answer it. Yeah, interesting. <laughs> <laughs> I'll answer you in September when I've seen Mandalorian. There yes. you go. Absolutely. We should just do our Mandalorian breakdown because we're uh, planning on doing that yeah. but um so are there any parts that you didn't like much of um season, season four. four we didn't love episode five we thought that might have been and not to sound harsh we thought that might have been the worst last kingdom episode that there's been and <laughs> which, just for the which episode was that again okay there was the one after the battle so it was really just edward and Erdwolf sort of politicking oh, about yeah, 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 yeah. who's going to be the next ruler of Mercia. Is it going to be you? Who do we? What do we need to? And it was I mean, just, it was all most, good stuff. But normally, yeah. the Last Kingdom sort of puts that all in like fifteen minutes yeah. throughout like the rest of the show. Yeah, but that, that was just, it's to me, it felt more like a Game of Thrones sort of like, like a lot of great shows. My phone episode. Yeah, yeah. like I'm I feel like it's on the politics of, of it all and uh, yeah, stuff like that. Yeah. Yeah. It was yeah. great performances, though. I mean, yeah. uh, great performances all around. And it was so cool. Like, that, it felt tense at that the dinner table and everything. And I think we still rated it when we did our, like, rating. We still rated it, like, what, six or something? What did we rated it? Yeah, about a Ish. six. We about a six, down. which is, like, if that's going to be a show's worst episode, I mean, that's pretty good. You yeah. know what I mean? Yeah, In yeah, our absolutely. opinions. But, yeah. I mean, some people, I think, some people love that episode. Um, yeah. But um, most shows, most great shows have those building episodes mm -hmm. you know what i mean mm -hmm. and the last kingdom has never really needed to do mm -hmm. one it's just all flowed so well with a bunch yeah. of exciting stuff packed together so i think they i think they they needed to show that it's not all battle and warfare totally you know i mean we've seen throughout three seasons that stuff goes on in the background you know people whispering in other people's ears and yeah, yeah. stuff like that but to really get into it i think uh, maybe the yeah i don't know and there were like in those episodes too there were like no danes really yeah that we because they just beat the danes you know yeah. any danes until not me so nine really well citra gear popped up and brita when we see her yeah, they, they show brita as a slave which was brutal to watch <sighs> yeah oh my god i was really glad that that one welsh guy got it <laughs> so bad yeah yeah i know <laughs> Yeah, Brita goes through uh, hell this season, that's for sure. Yeah. Physically and mentally. Because Uhtred was a dick and didn't kill her when she asked. Yeah. <laughs> but I can yeah, understand. No. I, I, I get that. I, first, first time, when I first thought of it, I was like, fuck, why didn't you do it? That was so not Uhtred. But then 
if you just, you know, recap a couple of episodes, he's lost everyone. Rita is the only thing left from his past, to be fair. Yeah. And that's hard to, you know, he would have been alone, I think. I think so too. I mean, he, I think he has a deep love for her, a deep, deep, deep oh, yeah. caring for her, you know, it just oh, goes yeah. way back to their roots. I mean, they're brothers and sisters and lovers. Yeah, well. <laughs> <laughs> oh, step, step. They were step slaves. Step slaves. <laughs> this is yeah. just sounding worse and worse. The <laughs> yeah, let's just not go there <laughs> anymore. It's not a Lannister way, everyone. It's not a Lannister, Lannister no, 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 way. No, 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 it's not. But in the books, too, they, they, they weren't uh, like that young when they first met each other. When the Uhtred and Brita first met each other, Brita and Uhtred, they were like, more Brita was in or... someone she was from like like a different Saxon tribe. He was yeah, yeah, yeah. He was already with the Danes for a while raiding. They actually met yeah. her like raiding somewhere else. Uh, yeah. uh, so, she, so like she that's kind of like why it's like that too, I guess. But um, oh. she plays such a good Dane that I forget she was Saxon. She yeah, was born Saxon. She's amazing. Emily is amazing. Just pissed off. <laughs> Super pissed off. pissed off. You had quite a few scenes with her this season too. Mm-hmm. I love that little thing when that um, lieutenant comes up to ramparts and say we will burn this whole thing down she just goes <laughs> and heston just goes yeah you look at her what are you doing <laughs> he's just <sighs> yeah do I what you I do what he's gonna say <laughs> yeah, yeah i know i love that was there that anything is- that surprised you because i we know you told us uh that you only really stuck to the parts of the script that were you were in so you would be kind of surprised. Was there anything? I had that- forgotten about the whole disease thing. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. I had forgotten about that. Yeah. A lot of stuff surprised me in a good way. I mean, I'd also forgotten the whole thing about Uhtred uh, being handed the throne to Mercia. Oh, yeah. That and was, giving that was it away. Shock. Yeah. I'd forgotten completely since I hadn't read it. You know, yeah, the whole season was surprising to me. I really want it to be a season five and I can't wait to see what's going to happen. If there is one, there there has to be. There has to be, right? Ricky Gervais, did you catch Ricky, Ricky Gervais? Gervais? Yes, he's been tweeting and uh, Instagram story just gushing over it. Were you a fan of Ricky Gervais before? I am such a fan of Ricky yeah. Gervais. Always been since his first show, the The Office. The Office. Always oh, super fun. I've seen him twice live in Norway. Oh, really? Uh, yeah, and um, for him, and we're all just. You no, know, we have this WhatsApp group mm-hmm. on the cast, and we were like, "Have you seen Ricky Gervais?" So everybody was super stoked, and uh, wow. yeah, I mean, he is also a a great creator of TV, you know. Yeah. He so really it is. doesn't it it means something that he says it, not just because he he's a fun guy or whatever or or known well known, but he knows what he's talking about. And so when like, he when yeah. he says it's proper made tv he means it but i like how he elaborates on it too he doesn't just say it. he like kind of goes into why he thinks that you know yeah i know i know i was like he'd, he'd be great on the podcast honestly i mean <laughs> <laughs> hey that's Good a mind. good idea let me know when maybe i should pop in just pop in to say hi if we, if hi, we ever Ricky. get him on <laughs> <laughs> yeah has he talked to anyone from the cast or crew or anything like that i t- we tweeted each other Oh yeah, which is basically yeah. I had goosebumps. I thought I was almost. <laughs> I had goosebumps for ten minutes after that. Yeah, <laughs> to be honest. We're, I, we're, we're not on Twitter much. Right now. I flipped. I flipped. I was yeah. just like, uh, "Can you die from having goosebumps for too long?" Oh my <laughs> <God>. Like, <laughs> yeah, it's good. It's so cool. That's like us yeah. every time when we're uh, when we're talking to someone from the cast or crew. Like, oh my god, you're <laughs> back in tire. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, but I mean, I'm just a dude, you know. I, I live in Norway and I work with a, what I work with, but I have heroes too, and he's one of my oh, heroes. Yeah. So uh, whenever your hero recognizes you uh, as a contender, uh, it's pretty wild. And you, you know, you've done a lot of comedy in Norway too, right? Mm-hmm. mm-hmm. Has, has he been a big inspiration for you in general for, for that? I think 
his show, The Office, was a huge inspiration for a lot of people in a lot of countries. Yeah. You can see now, I mean, and curb your enthusiasm and stuff, shows like that. Yeah. They've been made a lot of, like, um, copy killer <laughs> shows after those shows, you know? Yeah. So he's been a huge inspiration for a lot of people. And, uh, yeah, me included. You ever watch the, uh, the Invention of Lying? You ever see that? The Invention of Lying? No, I haven't seen it. Oh, it's, it's a good one. Is it's, it a good one? Oh, yeah. I haven't seen it. It's hilarious. I see, yeah. I, I love... Um, yeah, I love this. I love The Office, Extras, Afterlife. Have you seen Afterlife? Ruby was just telling us about Afterlife. Oh, that's so good. Yeah. Is it good? I love right. the whole, you know. Yeah. Do you know what it's about? Do you want to know the gist of it? Just yeah, like yeah. a yes. short gist? Sure. A guy uh, loses his wife and he doesn't think that he has anything to live for. So he decides to commit suicide. But on his way from realizing that he's going to commit suicide until the suicide, he can do whatever he wants because it will have no repercussions because he's going to die anyway. So as he oh. says, it's kind of like a superpower. He can be totally honest with everybody all the time. I love that. Ooh, that's a cool it's, concept. It's a really cool concept. Uh, it's, it's funny. It's sad. It's it's got everything. It, it just moves you on different uh, on a different level. Damn. Well, I'll tell you what. You, have to watch it after that. I mean, well, you should you've watch already it. you've already nailed one recommendation. So we're gonna have to <laughs> definitely write that one down. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You should. Afterlife. I mean, yeah. Afterlife. Yeah. So anything else new um, since we talked to you last? And I know you said um, it's been really slow there. It is super slow. Yeah. Okay. I've done a couple of. Um, I've uh, voiced a couple of cartoons and shows cool. in Norway again, in Norwegian again. Artemis Fowl, the Artemis Fowl. Oh, movie. oh yeah, really? Yeah, Sweet. I uh, voiced uh, Mulch Diggums, the giant dwarf in it. So uh, yeah, I've done a lot of voicing because then you're you can go in and be in a studio and you don't interact with other people almost, and you know, so that's safe to do. Yeah, yeah. right, right, right. Yeah, well, that's what I was telling Kobe is that. Like Heston has a really unique sort of voice, you know, mm -hmm. as soon as you can, you know, it's him before you even see him. Mm -hmm. And uh, we know Magnus Brune. He's in the new Assassin's game. Assassin's oh, yeah. Creed game. He's That's the new crazy. main character. Ivar, I think is how mm -hmm. you say it. Mm -hmm. uh, are you going to be in any video games or anything, you know, down the line? Or is that That's something, something you'd be interested in? All right. <laughs> <laughs> So you would be interested in it? Very. <laughs> okay. <laughs> cool. Very cool. That's Speaking awesome. of uh, just video game characters, though, and that, like, I keep, you know, since I've watched The Last Kingdom, like, the the accents of Scandinavians, like, it's just been stuck in my head now. And, like, anytime I see something like Marvel's Thor, I'm just like, why are they all talking, like, high British, you know, like, yeah, or, yeah, yeah. Yeah. or I love I love the God of War game. But, again, like, they're, like, Scottish the Vikings yeah, are I know, like, I know, I know, I know. And I'm like, why don't we have, because the Scandinavian accent's very, like, iconic. I mean, like, it's after it the is. first season, I mean, Colby and I, I were imitating one all the time. Yeah. 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 <laughs> and I could also speak in a Norwegian accent if I wanted to, uh, because we just uh, oh. speak English with our own tone, uh, tonation, you know? So uh, that's no that's problem. That's Norseman. <laughs> that's Norseman, yeah. It I is. noticed that. <laughs> yeah. yeah, but I just, I, that's what I want. Yeah, I just I, want... Scandinavian, you know, gods and all that. I want them to sound like Scandinavians now. I'm, yeah. You know. I must admit that kind of pissed me off in the whole Marvel series. The yeah. whole Valhalla with the with Odin and stuff in shiny uh, gold armor and it's not that's not what it's like. No. Yeah, yeah. It's, um especially if you look up into Norse mythology, it's just like but that's that's what I really want. I want some like yeah. some, Scandinavian yeah. twist. You said, we I never really, know. We never even thought about it until we kind of got into Last Kingdom and Vikings. And exactly. Stuff. And but, like, but we didn't. Again, we yeah, like you said, we didn't know though. So I was like, yeah, oh, no. that's what Thor would sound like. He would sound British. <laughs> he would yeah, sound but like I an think, Australian guy being British. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but I I think that that's been a part of Hollywood for a long, long time. I mean, take Star Wars. Almost everyone in the Empire or the Order or whatever, they have a British accent. If if you're a bad in the guy, Empire, right? If you're if you're a bad guy in Hollywood, then you speak British. That's it. 
easy like, way to distinct if you're a good. So if, is he a good guy? No, he speaks British. <laughs> <laughs> but it's been like that for many, many years, for decades, mm-hmm. right? Oh, that's interesting. Yeah. Well, now it anytime is. I watch a movie, I think that like Gladiator, they all have British accents, you know, mm-hmm. and they're yeah. the Romans, you know. So yeah, they do. Uh, but they were bad. They conquered the world. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Do you want to see someone who had their summer cut? Yeah, we do. Summer haircut. Come here, bro. Come on. You come. On. <laughs> He's not so scruffy looking anymore. Look at that. He's grown. He's grown. He's solo. Yeah, he is. That's he awesome. doesn't want screen time. Well, he wants playtime. <laughs> Always. Have you watched any other bi- um, really good shows since we talked to you last? Oh, I've started to watch uh, Black Mirror again because I yes. haven't seen that in a while. So I'm now on season three, I think. I, sh- I introduced Steve to Black Mirror. It was the one with uh, the guy and he- he's caught on his webcam. Oh, he's caught on his webcam. Pleasuring himself. Oh, yeah, Did you yeah, see yeah. that Everyone one? blackmailed. Yeah, yeah, yeah have to do all this crazy stuff and then at the yeah. end they still release all of it spoiler alert everyone out there <laughs> yeah and i and there were there are so many interesting dilemmas oh and i watched a documentary the other day about uh i think it was called athlete a about, about? the american uh gymnast association and a lot of stuff going on behind the curtains there with uh yeah, yeah, you know, like Ali Raisman and yeah. stuff. Mm. Yeah, and that Doctor oh, Nasser or something. I think he was called. I've seen it in the news. I haven't seen the documentary though. Horrible, fucking horrible. Jeez. That is, yeah. I did just find but a new. It's so doc- good that it's coming out. You know, and it, it is good. That shed a light on it. But, yeah. but uh, what a. <sighs> but if uh, I can, I can give you a couple of recommendations of, for example, Norwegian shows that you should watch. Do that. I would give you two recommendations. Okay. One, I'm in one, and the other one I'm not in, but I just love it. Uh, the first one is Beforeners. Did we talk about that last time? No. I don't think not. so, no. It's uh, kind of a satire, a whole um, immigration thing, but people immigrate from the past to the future because it's better here. Uh, it's on HBO. You should watch it. It's a Norwegian HBO. one. Yeah. Is that the one you're in? Yeah, that's one. I'm in that one, yeah. Sweet. So I play uh, yeah, a Viking Sweet. in that he just jumped a uh, thousand years into the future and uh, became a cleaner. And he feeds his dogs, dog mushrooms and stuff. And, you know. <laughs> it's, a, it's a really good show. It's really uh, one of my favorite Norwegian shows is a show called Nobel or Noble. No, not Nobel. Nobel, like the Peace Prize. Okay. You know? About a Norwegian soldier, a special forces soldier in Afghanistan and stuff. It's oh, really cool. good. Really, really good. You should just, watch it. I think I just saw a picture of the Danish special forces. Just a picture of what they like look like. Mm-hmm. And they look like the most badass soldiers I've ever seen. They had like these nets over their helmets. You couldn't see their faces. I think yeah, it was yeah, yeah. Den- Denmark. I was just like, oh my God. These guys look yeah. so cool. Oh, that's cool. I mean, so Nordic special forces are pretty, pretty badass because they, they could take the cold and stuff. You know? Oh yeah. I mean, Norwegian special forces, uh, FSK is, uh, yeah, they're, they're among the, the top of the bad in the world. Cool. Yeah. That's cool. Okay. So before the beforeners on HBO yeah, and, and Nobel, is, on, and Nobel Netflix. on Netflix, we'll check I those think. out. Yeah, check them so out. So are they they're um Norwegian shows are they in English or do we have to with subtitles or I mean Nobel is both Norwegian and English because it okay, happens cool. abroad and in Norway and The Foreigners is in uh uh that was super interesting. I as I play a uh uh a Norseman from 1000 years ago, uh they had professors in language in the university make written language old Norse language into spoken words. Uh, so all my lines are in Norse. Okay. And it's crazy. I mean, I am good with lines. It takes me about five, 10 minutes if it's Norwegian or English or whatever. But these lines took me three days. I mean, I have nothing, you know, to. Right. Yeah. But it was very, very interesting. Very cool. 
So that's in Norse and Mesopotamian and English and Norwegian. Yeah, Very foreigners. Cool. But it's worth a look. Well, cool, yeah. definitely will. Yeah. There's, a, there's a, something I wanted to ask you last time. We were talking about concerts you've been to. Mm -hmm. And I was curious. You said you saw Gojira, what, five or six times? Mm -hmm. And you saw them in L.A. Mm -hmm. Henry, I think it was the Henry Fonda Theater. I guess, how do you compare the concert experiences like in the U.S. and where you've seen them before? I mean, Americans are a bit more rowdy. Oh, really? Yeah, as a people. Okay. They're a bit more, woo <laughs> You know, that's what we think. Uh, <laughs> Everyone but, uh, thinks of Texas, I feel like, when they think yeah, of yeah. Yeehaw! Yeehaw! <laughs> But um, no, as a concert, not that different, to be honest. I mean, there's a metal band and there are metal fans and metal fans doing what they do. They make mosh pits and bang their heads and, you know. Are you so, a mosh pitter? I was. Okay. But no, not, not anymore. anymore. <laughs> I wasn't like uh, one of those, because you have different types of mosh pitters. You know, people are just there or people just start punching people. And stuff. Some people just start punching people. It's ridiculous. <laughs> what the hell is it's that not about? a mosh pit. It's like, that's, not a, that's not a mosh pit. That's an octagon. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that's making the square. Yeah, make the square. <laughs> yeah. No, uh, yeah. If you go to YouTube and you type in Gajira Wall of Death. Hellfest. I think it's from in 2017 France? or something. In France, right? That's in France, yeah. They're on their home turf. Yeah, yeah. And you got, I mean, there's 20,000 people and at one point oh, he just, man. like Moses. And are you ready? In French, are you ready? I want to see the wall of death. Separate, separate, oh, separate. And, you can just, and they start. <laughs> and they just. <laughs> oh, man. I'll definitely Crazy. look that up. Yeah. So I don't want to go to France for a metal concert. For, for sure. <laughs> because if you're in that, where they do the wall of death, like there's no getting out of it. <laughs> like you could just you get trampled down and duck and cover, set up a shield wall. Cause uh, <laughs> yeah, you should, you should, you should check it out on YouTube. It's, I will look uh, that up. I, look, I will look that up. I mean, Gojira yeah. just, I think is known for having crazy concerts anyway. Yeah. I remember my first, my first, my first concert with them. They were so happy with the show because with that, they've said it later as well. That, that was one of the best shows here in Norway. Really? And uh, they were so pumped. So they started crowd surfing after the show on like a surfboard and stuff. We just carried them around. So, uh, That's yeah. so cool. That's so cool. Yeah. You can tell when bands like have enjoyed the experience of their own shows oh, yeah. too. Oh, yeah. I've been to a couple where like they weren't happy. Yeah, I mean, a couple, you know, and they just walk like, off and that's it. Yeah. But if they stay there and they, yeah, they, yeah, they really enjoy it. That's awesome. Metal that's awesome. family. But I want to really want to go to a gig again. Ugh. Yeah. And that's probably you know? something that might not happen in the near For future. A while. Yeah. Because how can you do that? It'd be weird to have a metal show with uh, standing six feet apart and, yeah. uh, well, you could do it. You just, everybody's headbanging. Six Everybody feet has apart. their own little mosh pit. <laughs> Just spinning. <laughs> yeah, I was just, just spinning around. <laughs> yeah, Everyone I think, does, you know, the arm distance. Yeah, yeah. To make sure. perfect. It's perfect. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and masks, should. and that would be great. Yeah. The faster we get rid of this, the faster we can go back to our normal lives. So. Yeah, yeah. That's true. And yeah, metal we'll have shows. to put in uh, effort and make some sacrifices. I don't know what I mean. You do. If Hopefully. not going to a concert is a sacrifice, then you're you're in a good spot <laughs> yeah and i'm hoping you know? the bands are probably hopefully taking this opportunity to make new music and stuff oh yeah that would be yeah. great yeah i think yeah. they're in the studio now kojira is i don't think so yeah that's pretty can't cool. wait do you you like tenacious d i went to tenacious d no uh, you didn't a year ago was it in norway oh wow yeah. that was great that was super cool but that was a, that was a weird concert because I don't know. So many, um, so many nerds coming out drinking at the same time. People that don't usually go to concerts, you know. Uh. It's like watching the IT department have their Christmas party. <laughs> the guys that never drink, but on just that one occasion, mm. and the dance floor. You know, it's it's weird. It was weird. I've oh, never, I've, I, I hardly ever see fighting in uh, Norwegian concerts, but 
there. There was a lot of fighting. On a tenacious wow. D, uh, a tenacious what? D. It's supposed to be funny. Yeah, like laughing. Yeah, just just to have just in front of me, two guys started fighting, and I had to separate them and stuff. That's crazy. It's crazy. So weird. It was, it was weird. Was Jack concept. Black actually a great singer? Yeah. Yeah. Oh yeah, he is. Yeah. Oh, yeah. He sounds like he is. Oh yeah, he's good. Super good. And yeah, I miss those. Yeah. But I miss work more. I want to work. I'm gonna put on a costume and not be me. <laughs> I I read an article about uh, a couple of days ago about how animated series will have a boom now because since they haven't been able oh. to put actors together, they can do make a lot of animation. True. So, so that's going to be interesting. So hopefully we'll get a new Rick and Morty season before. Uh... Oh. <laughs> Do you like what Rick and Morty? What a crazy season that was the last Do you like one, Rick and Morty? I love it. Oh, yes. Yeah. It's awesome. Wait a second. I'll show you something. Oh, okay. I have him right here. You got my very own Pickle Rick. Pickle Rick. I wore. <laughs> Wait. Yeah. Can you hold on a sec? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Of course. <laughs> I wore this shirt yesterday. <laughs> nice. Okay. Now I'm going to up the ante now. Oh, okay. Oh. I, oh, shit. You're not a real fan if you don't have this. It's my doormat. Oh! <laughs> oh! You're trumped. You're done. <laughs> Wait, what's You're this done. say? Welcome to Dimension C-137. You win. You win. I have another Pickle Rick shirt, but it's like, it's like got like a diagram of how he gets put together and stuff. Yeah. I was going to yeah. go get that, but I can't beat that doormat. <laughs> yeah. I had to have that doormat. But anyway, um, yeah, but we really appreciate you giving us your time again today. Hey, man. It's really been fun talking. Always yeah. fun talking with you. Likewise. Anything out there for the fans? It wouldn't have happened without you guys. Um, we, are, we have the best fan base. Uh, so passionate. Couldn't have done it without them. Yep. Thank you so much for coming. Again, you can check out Yep on Instagram, Twitter, IMDB. It's all going to be linked below. Check out our first talk with him as well. It was a really fun talk there as well. And then also check out the Screen Chronicles. Keep up with us. We'll keep doing yeah. talks and everything like that. So do it or Heston will come for you before you sleep. <laughs> you heard it there. Yeah. I'll find you. I spy on everyone. <laughs> Perfect. Well, <laughs> goodbye from the Screen Chronicles and the Epic Beck Larson. See you guys. <laughs> <laughs>